When do liberals say enough is enough when it comes to letting career criminals run rampant in our streets? A commuter killed in New York City after being shoved in front of a moving subway train in an unprovoked attack. Police charging the suspect with murder, adding to his rap sheet of four prior arrests. The New York Post capturing the moment the suspect flashed a smile as he was let out of a police precinct. And an NYPD officer fatally shot during a routine traffic stop. The suspects both with lengthy criminal histories. The driver has 14 prior arrests. And the shooter has been busted 21 times, including nine felonies. New York City Mayor Eric Adams calling the incident a recidivist problem. There's a small number of people who are repeated offenders, and I'm hoping that our lawmakers, that we focus on that body of people, and I'm hoping that our judges focus on it. It is so... Yeah, judge, nine felonies. We always talk about prosecutors. These judges are letting a lot of people off the hook. Well, there's no question. Look, Jesse, I could go through each one. Uh, you know, the, the police officer who was killed who has a one-year-old child, I mean, it was, a, it was a routine traffic stop. What what most people don't realize is a traffic stop is the most dangerous setting for a police officer. More cops are killed in traffic stops, and then the next is domestic violence settings. Um, this guy just got out of state's prison. He, What we do know about Rivera, who shot the cop, is he had two state prison terms, uh, one for controlled substance and the other for attempted murder and a robbery. Uh, very serious career criminal. Uh, he probably should have been in state's prison. He was off parole. They let him out in 2021, apparently kept him on parole for two years. Maybe should have been on parole uh, for more than that. But let's talk about the driver, 14 arrest. He was out on bail. He's been convicted, the driver, of attempted murder already. He was out on bail. And meanwhile, this McPherson nut job who pushed the uh, person in front of the train, not only does he have a demonstrated mental illness and a record of the same, uh, he apparently was arrested three times on one charge, and they kept bail they kept letting him go without bail. Finally, they set bail at 2000 So I could complain about parole not keeping the guy long enough for the one guy. The one guy, how does he out on? jail if he's already been convicted of attempted murder and now they got him on a gun charge. Why are they giving him bail? Keep him in jail. And then the mental guy who's got four priors, burglary, assault, fair beating. And for all you people who don't think fair beating is a serious crime, it's not, but it leads to everything else. This is that we live in a, in a country and in a city, certainly, where criminals are emboldened. They're not afraid of us. We're afraid of them. Mm -hmm. I could say we've got to change the bail laws. I could say we've got to get prosecutors uh, better than uh, Bragg, who's prosecuting Danny Penny for protecting people on a subway car. Uh, and, you know, Kathy Hochul, who keeps putting police in and saying, you know, that we're imagining crime in the subways when we're seeing it every day now, uh, people shoving other people off. So it, we're living at a time where unless we take the bull by the horns, change the law as it relates to the bail issue, uh, refunding the police departments, taking out the DAs who are not prosecuting these crimes, then we're, gonna, we're all going to be victims. It's that simple. And Jessica, you're a compassionate woman. What's going on here? 14 second chances? No. It's too many. And if you want to look at this through the most craven lens, which I think is how most politicians do, you can look at the results of Kathy Hochul's race for governor, where Lee Zeldin got within a few points of hers in a blue, blue state. And that should have never happened if not for the crime issue and her refusal to address it. And you look at all of the seats that Republicans picked up on Long Island, George Santos included, and that was one of the key issues that swayed it for Republicans and how they were able to take back the majority. It was slim, but we still lost seats that we easily could have won. And when people... We're coming out in the exit polls and in conversations afterwards, they said that this was an issue for them and it was one that was seemingly just ignored. And Tom Swazi, who has now won the George Santos seat back, if you look at the way that he's talking, it is a big departure from how the general party is talking about this issue. And I, I think that it's because these are the types of things that even if the numbers are technically going down, you feel it every day. And I talk to people, you know, who take the subway, don't take the subway, or just living here. And there's an air, it's in the air, that it is 
you are one person away from a like a random act of violence. Yeah. And that that's a scary way to live and, and that we shouldn't have to. Dana. Well, we only have a minute left, so let me just say, it's not the bags, Governor, okay? As we said from the beginning, it's mentally ill people on the subway. So if you have a triage situation, get the mentally ill people out of the subways, put the people who are committing crimes in jails, prosecute them, fire Alvin Bragg, you could actually do something. Yep. Um, you could have a surge, you could do something. They're, you're not powerless, and why'd you run anyway? Greg? Well, I, I mean, you know, we've said all of this stuff so many yeah. times. You have to ask, why don't they listen? It strikes me as really irrational what's going on. Why haven't the people in charge say they've had enough? Is it because their ego refuses the, the ability to admit they're wrong? I don't care if they admit or they're wrong or right. Just do something. I think what's happened is they've demonized rationality by replacing that sort of thinking with this, I said it yesterday, delusional empathy. So any efforts based on self-defense, security, law and order is viewed as inhumane. Compa you're not compassionate. Uh, they've undermined rational thinking. And this is deliberate. This is why when you talk, you, when we talk about these things, they don't hear it because they don't want to hear it. This is a deliberate action. They've undermined rational thinking about law and order by saying our country is plagued by an eternal origin of white supremacy and slavery. That led, that led to the hysteria in which we undoed all common sense making about bail, arrests, prison time, basic security on your streets, mass theft, carjacking. All of those basic common sense principles that dealt with those things were reversed because they came from the pro they are products of a racist society. So we allowed idiots, malicious idiots, to upend the greatest system ever. Uh, and we replaced rational thought with this irrational behavior in which all costs and benefits go out the window. They don't even care about what happens next. We have demonized self-preservation. If you are worried about your family, that could be construed as racist. If you want to crack down on criminals, racist. If you want to institutionalize the mentally ill, that's obviously inhumane. You want to de defend cops? Well, you're defending the oppressor. You want to build a wall that's xenophobic. You see how it all comes together. If you want to save your family and yourself, you're the bad guy. Yep. Nothing more dangerous than a malicious idiot. That's true, Jesse, you would know. <laughs> Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.